The Carniferous Forest, which is also known as the Boreal Forest and the Taiga, is the largest terrestrial biome on planet Earth, covering almost 11% of the planet's land surface. It expands from 50 degrees north latitude to around 72 degrees north latitude, located mostly in northern Europe, Eurasia, and North America. This biome is known as a carnivorous forest because its forests are made up almost exclusively of carnivorous, which means cone-bearing, evergreen trees. Evergreens thrive in this biome because they can withstand the cold environment provided by the boreal forest due to their cone-like shape, which allows them to shed snow easily and conserving energy by not shedding their leaves and having to regrow them in the spring. The boreal forest is extremely cold. The average temperature for six months of the year is below the freezing point, making it very difficult for other types of plants to thrive there. The taiga only has two seasons, a short, rainy, and somewhat warm summer that lasts three months, and then a long, cold, and dry winter. The average precipitation of the carnivorous forest is from about 20 centimeters to over 200 centimeters. This precipitation comes mostly in the form of snow. Due to the extreme colds, this biome is exposed to almost year-round. When compared to other biomes, the carnivorous forest has more precipitation than the tundra, temperate grassland, woodland, and subtropical desert, but less precipitation than the deciduous forest, savanna, temperate rainforest, and obviously the tropical rainforest. The average temperature of the boreal forest is from 5 degrees Celsius to negative 5 degrees Celsius. In regards to temperature, the taiga is one of the coldest terrestrial biomes on Earth, with only the tundra, small parts of the woodland biome, and small parts of the temperate grassland biome having a colder average annual temperature. Although this colder climate is a definite limiting factor in this biome, it is not the only one, for the soil is also very poor. The soil typically does not have many nutrients, it is acidic due to the fallen conifer needles, and it is very thin all of which are not very conducive for plant life. Another limiting factor is the amount of sunlight the boreal forest receives. During the three months of summer, the carnivorous forest receives almost 20 hours of sunlight a day, allowing life to flourish. But as soon as winter sweeps over the area, sunlight is restricted to a few short hours a day, which inhibits the growth of life. The carnivorous forest is home to many producers. An example of one of these producers is the black spruce tree which is spread all throughout the North American part of the biome. It grows from 5 meters to 15 meters tall, and its base is 15 to 50 centimeters in diameter. It provides mass amounts of oxygen into the atmosphere, and also provides food for insects and small animals. Another example of a producer found in the taiga is the balsam fir. The balsam fir is found on the eastern part of the North American boreal forest, and is a small to medium-sized evergreen tree. Yet another producer found in this biome is what's known as a lady fern. The lady fern, or common lady fern, is a dominant plant on the forest floor in the boreal forest. It is eaten by many animals, such as the grizzly bear and elk. It exists in most parts of Canada and all of the United States. In the winter, this plant becomes a major food supply for moose. The white fir is another example of a producer within the taiga. It grows from 60 to 100 feet tall and its seeds provide a food source for squirrels in this biome. It is clear that the carnivorous forest is abundant with producers, but they also have a large amount of consumers. One example of a consumer in the taiga is the bald eagle. The bald eagle is found all over continental America, Canada, and mostly in Alaska. They are birds of prey that have a very strong curved beak, excellent vision, and sharp talons. Their main food sources are fish and dead animals that they can find. They have very large nests that are usually found in trees and on cliffs. Another example of a consumer would be the gray wolf. The gray wolf inhibits most of the boreal forest biome in both the North American part and the Eurasian part. They are the largest wild canine species in the world. They are about 3 feet tall and 3 to 5 feet in length. They can range from 40 to 180 pounds in weight eating mostly deer-like animals, such as elk and caribou and moose. They are an apex predator in the taiga. Grizzly bear is another consumer in this biome that also happens to be an apex predator. Grizzly bears are a subspecies of the brown bear. One of the characteristics that distinguish the two is the shoulder bump that is unique to the grizzly bear. Grizzly bears are omnivores and lack shearing teeth. They are very strong and very fast animals. 
they are capable of reaching 35 miles per hour in short distances. They can weigh from 330 pounds to 885 pounds and range from 4.9 to 8.3 feet in length. They can live up to around 25 years. Their diets consist mostly of different kinds of plants, but they also eat insects, honey, rodents, fish, various mammals such as moose and elk, and dead animals they find. Yet another example of a consumer in the coniferous forest is the red fox. The red fox can grow up to be 2.5 feet in length and about 16 inches tall. Its fur is red-orange with black legs. It is a very intelligent animal that specializes in hunting small animals such as rabbits, hares, mice, and rats. It is a nocturnal animal that travels and hunts alone. It is found all throughout the boreal forest biome and almost all throughout the northern hemisphere. With many organisms present within this biome, the food web that expresses the transfer of energy is very complex. Like everywhere else in the world, all energy in the taiga comes from the sun. It then travels to first level producers, such as the balsam fir, and is tra then transferred to the primary consumers, such as the snowshoe hare. The energy is then transferred again into the secondary consumers, such as the Canadian lynx, a common predator of the snowshoe hare. Decomposers then break down dead and wasted material, returning some of the, of the nutrients and energy back to the soil. One of the common prey to predator relationships in this biome is the snowshoe hare and the Canadian lynx. The Canadian lynx hunts the snowshoe hare almost exclusively. It is by far its favorite animal for prey. This has created somewhat of a dependence on the snowshoe hare. This is proven by the lynx population growing after the hare population grows, but declining rapidly after the hare population declines. Another predator and prey relationship in this biome is the gray wolf and the moose. These two organisms experience the same type of rise and fall population as the lynx and the hare do, although it is not as severe because the gray wolf has a much more diverse diet than the lynx does. Yet another example of a predator and prey relationship would be the grizzly bear and salmon. Grizzly bears rely on salmon as their primary pre-hibernation food source, and if the salmon population within this biome were to decrease, many bears would not gain enough weight to survive hibernation and will starve. The bears are completely dependent on the salmon because of this fact. In order for plants to survive in this biome, they needed to adapt to the cold and nutrient-poor environment around them. Adaptations that allow plant life to thrive in the taiga include not shedding their needles, the needles having a waxy coating around them, a small surface area to minimize water loss, short roots having a cone-like shape so snow cannot pile on them, and pine cones to protect their seeds. Plants are not the only organisms that have developed specific adaptations to survive in the taiga. Many animals are very well equipped to endure the harsh climate. For example, many types of birds migrate from the carnivorous forest to miss the freezing winters and return for the brief summer. Other animals have adapted to hibernate as to miss the cruel conditions of winter, such as the grizzly bear. Almost all animals in the boreal forest have some type of insulation, whether it be fur or feathers, such as the thick fur found on the gray wolf, lynx, and caribou. Some animals in this biome have developed camouflage. Camouflage in this biome is incredibly difficult due to the colors changing from greens, browns, and yellows to white, but organisms such as the snowshoe hare change color depending on the season in order to successfully camouflage. Organisms in this biome have also developed ways to deal with the snow by developing snowshoes. These snowshoes are found on the Canadian lynx, snowshoe hare, and many more. The snow leopard is found in the Asian boreal forests and is considered an endangered species. It was placed on the endangered species list in 1972 due to a rapidly falling population. It plays the role of an apex predator, especially controlling the populations of wild sheep and goats. One of the main problems with the snow leopard is the illegal poaching for its fur coat. Many farmers also hunt snow leopards because they tend to eat their livestock. In some places, livestock can make up 58% of a snow leopard's diet. They are also poached for their bones, sold specifically in the Chinese market as tiger bone, which is thought to have medicinal value. 
Also, as more and more farms spring up, they are encroaching into the snow leopard's natural territory, making it harder for them to survive. There are from 4,080 to 6,590 snow leopards left in the world, with a decreasing trend. Most of the 12 countries that they live in have them legally protected, although it is not adequately enforced by those countries. Another effort to help save the snow leopard was the formation of the Snow Leopard Network, which aimed for coordination, cooperation, and, for, and information sharing about the snow leopard. However, the Snow Leopard Network has not received sufficient funding, making its impact very limited. One way that humans are affecting the taiga is logging. The trees present in the carnivorous forest are slow growing and take an extremely long time to become full grown. If they are cut down and the forests are decimated, even if they are replanted, they will not be full grown for generations. The cause of logging is driven by the U.S. need for products from logging, such as lumber and paper. Canada, where most of the boreal forest is located, ships 80% of their logging products to the United States so there are obvious financial reasons to infiltrate the taiga. This leads to people setting their sights on cutting down the mass amounts of forests in Canada, causing controversy. However, 94% of Canada's forests are publicly owned, meaning that a possible solution would be the Canadian government labeling them as wildlife reserves or national parks, which would put strict regulations and security regarding these in forests. Another way humans are affecting the carnivorous forest is through industrial hydropower dams in Canada. These dams on the boreal forest's northern rivers are flooding habitats, clogging lakes up with sediment, and killing fish. Canada is the world's leading producer in hydropower, with much of the energy being shipped to the United States. Possible solutions to this problem would be to have the government officials test lakes from nearby dams for sediment buildup fish depletion, or flooding. If such things are found, the dams should be shut down and destroyed, allowing nature to once again continue undisturbed.